she's sure something else is going on and makes an emergency appointment with a specialist. I saw a gastroenterologist. She gave me an exam, pressed on my stomach in a lot of places. The doctor weighed me and told me that I had what she described as the typical profile of an anorexic, which is young, female, perfectionist. Anorexia nervosa is an eating disorder in which someone deliberately does not eat for the purpose of getting thinner. She told me that I wanted to starve myself. I was just shocked that she would jump to that conclusion immediately when my stomach pains and vomiting were so real, so terrible. I just couldn't believe it. It just made me so mad. I knew that it was not anorexia. There was something physically wrong with her. Desperate for an explanation, Samantha sets up appointments with every kind of specialist she can think of. I went to see a cardiologist. I went to see a rheumatologist. I went to see a hematologist. I must have seen over a dozen doctors and taken as many tests. I was scanned, prodded, poked, x-rayed, just one thing after the other, and they hadn't found anything. Besides telling me that I was underweight, nobody had any answers for me at all, and that was very frightening. By October, Samantha weighs a shocking 72 pounds, and her health is rapidly deteriorating. Sometimes I would just get dizzy and tired. Walking back to my room, I would take rests on the curb, put my backpack down, sit down, put my head between my legs sometimes, because I'd just be so tired from walking. My illness made me feel just isolated from the world. It was just me and my pain, and nobody would believe that it was there. One November afternoon after class, I wanted to catch the bus to shorten my walk back to my dorm. And the bus started to leave without me. And instinctively, I started to jog after it, hoping the driver would see me so she would pull over. And then I felt like my throat was closing, my chest was tightening. I felt like I couldn't breathe. Next thing I knew, somebody had called for an ambulance. Everything happened so fast, I didn't know what to feel. I was just basically trying not to panic. When the ambulance came, they put me on a stretcher and lifted me into the ambulance. I was taken to the hospital, to the ER, and there they checked my heart rate. I was given an EKG. The doctor said that my heart was weakened by my weight loss. He said the heart is a muscle, and just like you've lost most of the other muscle in your body, you've probably lost some of your heart muscle because you are so underweight. So now your heart has to work very hard, pumping really fast in order to provide enough blood and oxygen. He said that according to the World Health Organization, I was below the starvation point. And that was a very frightening thought. I was hitting rock bottom. I was very scared for Samantha. That was very scary. I was scared she was going to die. It was really frustrating and frightening because nobody knew what was happening to my body. I was reaching the end of my rope, so I was thinking I have to take matters into my own hands. Samantha throws herself into researching her symptoms. And just three days later, she's on to something. I noticed with all the tests that were being done that they were all focusing on my stomach or my large intestines. So I started thinking, what about everything in between? So I did some research and I read about an upper GI series and how that got good images of the entire stomach, small intestines, and large intestines. Convinced this may be the key to understanding her condition, Samantha requests an upper gastrointestinal series with radiologist Dr. Ziad Haddad. I first came into contact with Samantha uh, on January 18th, 2008. Her body was telling her that something was wrong and she was uh, determined to get to the bottom of it. I was quite surprised with the severity of her symptoms. That afternoon, Samantha undergoes the test. So an upper GI series is a study performed by a radiologist where we use continuous x-rays called fluoroscopy. It's a way of looking at the upper digestive tract. The patient drinks barium, 
a contrast solution that allows the radiologist to watch in real time as the mixture travels through the digestive tract. During the test, he said, I see a problem. The solution is not flowing through your intestines. He said, this is extremely serious. I was very frightened, but I was determined to find out what was wrong.